taking the Russia Ukraine example all of the public diplomacy or uh, propaganda effort uh, you see on the internet is uh, well not all but 90 95% of it is ukrainian back uh, so you've got ukraine you've got the uk and the us these these three uh, entities are uh, really pushing their message uh, left right and center the russians have uh, haven't really attempted to do that since day one they were completely silent they haven't put their uh, famed propaganda networks to use in this and that is something that i not just us it's it's baffling uh, experts as well what are the russians doing is that because they're more focused on the kinetic part of the conflict than this i mean it can happen simultaneously right because it's not the same people doing both right i mean the guy who does propaganda is not the guy who fights on the battlefield uh, so uh, it's not that you know they can't do it they could if they wanted to either they've decided not to do it or something is preventing them i have no way of knowing what is the case in this but uh, this forms a brilliant case study on how effective propaganda ultimately is towards the final outcome uh, whichever way it goes and uh, the ukrainians have done brilliantly in that regard they are pushing propaganda like crazy uh, especially in the first few months of war uh, it it kind of backfired uh, because many of the things that they pushed were fantastic you had uh, ghost of kiev shooting down i don't know i and the last count i read was 20 odd russian yeah. aircraft this <laughs> is gas <laughs> then you had uh, I, uh, they they recently came out uh, it wasn't the ukrainians it was british newspapers which came out with a photograph of a, a ukrainian pensioner uh, holding a double barrel uh, rifle with the claim that uh, that guy had shot down either a drone or a helicopter with that rifle and mm-hmm. uh, he was being felicitated for it again it's it stretches credibility and uh, a lot of people online and i can see that on twitter they've kind of soured about it because uh, they feel uh, taken advantage of they, if you if you just uh, do a casual search of your own twitter feed the number of ukrainian flags uh, against uh, profiles has really gone down in the past few months whether that is uh, people saying on the propaganda or whether it's you know reality starting to bite in terms of energy costs uh, yeah i wouldn't uh, dare to comment on that but it is a phenomenon i'm observing yeah because uh, even i was speaking to a few senior military officials mm-hmm. uh, retired ones uh, who've been observing the conflict uh, for a while, uh, f- since since it began right. and obviously there was this streak of misinformation and propaganda which was mm-hmm. continuously being carried out so today even if the ukrainians claim that they've taken over a particular uh, part of territory that was occupied by right. the russians mm-hmm. nobody is actually willing to buy it yeah because there's not a lot of solid evidence uh, that's being actually put out because there is such amount of information overload that's out there right uh, because in the first part of the war uh, these same accounts put out claims which were then proven to be completely false so credibility is uh, is if it isn't gone already it's hanging by a thread and people aren't so willing to trust these sources anymore they want corroboration they want proof 